like a firefighter running to the fire. That's the culture that we brought to the uh, initial response with COVID-19. And so that, that was perhaps our most important uh, first line response. Whether you're a frontline nurse, physician, or maybe you're one of our uh, environmental care services workers who are going in and cleaning the rooms afterwards, being there for one another and saying, how can we help you? How can we do this together? And what do you need that you're not getting now that we can help uh, get you through this? I've watched nurses day after day, no matter how stressful it is, continue to do their best work and maybe their best work ever. I've had the pleasure of working in this intensive care unit for 13 years now. And the evergreen way is people always trying to help each other. And it could be a staff member or a nurse or a doctor helping a patient, but sometimes it's helping each other. The ICU has come together in ways that I've never expected, but certainly not surprised because truthfully we see it every day. When the Centers for Disease Control changed their, or adjusted their requirements for testing, and we moved to that, and we tested two patients on February 28th, we didn't have any expectation that they would be positive. That evening, when those results came back, Dr. Rito, our infectious disease medical director, called me and asked, are you sitting down, Dr. Palazzo? I have some news to tell you. And it was um, a, uh, a moment where we knew things were, would change for us. Evergreen, uh, some time ago committed to being prepared in what we call an all hazards response to whatever emergency came uh, our way. Uh, over a decade ago, we, we committed to sending 20 people annually to the Center for Domestic Preparedness in Anniston, Alabama. It's an old army base that uh, has been closed down, but they have a hospital there. And they uh, formed this organization through FEMA and Homeland Security in order to train first responders as well as healthcare providers to respond to whatever that hazard would be. So it could be shootings, it could be chemical spills, or it could be a pandemic. So that was a part of our culture. And so having that crew of well over several hundred people go through that training and bring that back uh, really allowed us to be prepared for whatever happened, uh, whatever came your way. So when COVID-19 uh, appeared in our midst, uh, we set up and responded to it the way we've been trained to do. So that culture was very important. Beyond just the training though, we, we had a facility that was really ready to respond to that. Uh, we've been blessed uh, with leaders in our uh, past as well as the Board of Commissioners who gave us a facility that could respond to that through negative uh, airflow, reverse pressure through the, the facility and rooms that allowed us to take care of the pandemic. So we had a facility, we had people who were trained, and uh, more importantly though, it was really the culture of the people that were going to respond to that. So right from that first day, the ICU was an overhaul. Everybody was pitching in to see how we can make sure we do this well and we do it right. And that first week almost seems like a blur as so many patients were coming in that needed care, as well as changes in the administration and, and the, the way we do things in the ICU to not only keep our patients healthy and get them through this illness, but also protect our staff and physicians. I just have one word and that is uh, I'm humbled. Uh, I've never been as humbled as I am, am now in my career, watching my partners, uh, my fellow uh, team members lean in and run into the fire, so to speak, every day to take care of these patients. It is uh, an amazing thing to watch. And the fact that they do this uh, without reservation and knowing that this is what they were trained for is a quite an amazing thing. There's a reason why our nurses are showing up every day, right? To care for patients. Um, it has a moral distress component to it every day when we walk in. Um, I don't think that ever changes. I don't care if you're 20,000 feet from that or one foot from the bed, it's uh, impactful. And yet they continue to do it. And they continue to do it in the manner with honor, empathy, and compassion that we would all want for our parents, our brothers, and our sisters, and for our community. And so for me, 
it's always renews my spirit in nursing. This is what we do, whether we're scared or not. The teamwork is unbelievable. And it's not just in our ICU, it's our administrators, it's the people that clean the rooms, it's our community that's bringing in lunches every day for us, day and night. It's our friends that are bringing in warm socks for when we go home, just to make part of our day a little bit better. I've been amazed at the outpouring of love kindness, uh, the thank you cards on note on your dashboard when you come out. It's amazing. I just don't know how to say thank you enough for the community. It's been heart, heartwarming and very, very inspiring and it keeps us going. I can't say enough about the community's response to this in terms of, of their concern for us. So many times they've asked us, you know, how can we help? We've had uh, people delivering uh, food uh, to different areas of the organization for some time. We've had so many cards and thank yous and emails about uh, thank you for your hard work and, and uh, so grateful for what you're doing. Uh, the community support has just been amazing. And as we look to build our new ICU, more than ever, we really realize the importance of having our families with us. So in the design of the new intensive care unit, there will actually be built in an area specifically for the families to feel comfortable, an area that they recognize as their own in the patient room with them. What we need help with is to continue to be ready for the next 20 years, for whatever is going to come in the next 20 years. And together with our community and the help that you give us is how we will meet whatever challenges come our way for the next 20 years. So on behalf of everyone at Evergreen Health, thank you. We want you to know that we are committed to our community for now and for generations to come. And we're all in this together.